हेलो चिल्ड्रेन माई सेल्फ मिसेस सबिता पटनायक टीचर इन इकोनॉमिक्स डी एम स्कूल रीजनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एजुकेशन भुवनेश्वर इन दिस सेशन टूडे आवर टॉपिक इज पॉवर्टी एज ए चैलेंज दिस इज द टॉपिक इन इकोनॉमिक्स इन क्लास नाइन्थ नाउ चिल्ड्रेन पॉवर्टी इज वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट चैलेंज दैट इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया हैज बिन फेसिंग अनदर इम्पोर्टेंट चैलेंज इज अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट which we have already discussed in the previous chapter and today we will be talking about what is this poverty how can poverty be measured and what are the challenges that are there in relation to poverty now children in our day to day life we come across people who we can identify as poor they could be the landless laborers in the village or they could be the people who are residing in jhuggies or slums in the cities they could be the people who are working as laborers in the construction sites or they could be the children who are working in the dhabas or they could be the children and even the people who are selling vegetables and fruits on the road side we see poverty all around us in fact poverty has been a greatest challenge to india since a long time india has the largest single concentration of poor in the world every fourth person in india is poor roughly 270 million that is 27 crore of people in india live in now children you saw the visuals related to poverty now we can make out certain common things from these visuals which will help us in defining what is poverty or what does poverty means poverty means what hunger and lack of shelter now children you saw in the visuals people who are poor they are starving they are not having enough food two square meals a day and they don't even have proper shelter they don't have proper clothes they don't have proper houses to live in you will find people are spending their nights in the bus stops in the railway stations on the road sides on the footpaths because they don't have proper houses forget about hygiene and sanitation they don't even have enough proper drinking water now other feature that we could find out from the visuals is that people who are in poverty they suffer from malnutrition because of food lack of food they are not able to grow properly so they suffer from mal nutrition and the parents are unable unable to send their children to school there is the inability of the parents due to lack of enough income to send their children to school children are not going to school they are seen to be begging or they are seen to be working in the small tea stalls or would be in small dhabas okay now these people who are poor they are also unable to afford the medical care whenever they fall sick they don't have enough money to visit a doctor or consume medicines lack and lack of clean water and sanitation is always there because they live in the surrounding which lack in 
proper provision of water and sanitation. Now there is also a lack of regular job. These people who are in poverty, they do not have a regular job. Children, if you remember in the previous chapter, we had discussed about unemployment and there we talked about seasonal unemployment. That means what people are employed in some part of the year and in some other months they are not having any work or income. And landlessness is a typical feature of poverty. People who are not owning land, particularly in the rural areas, they belong to the poor category. And these people, they live in a sense of helplessness because they do not have income due to unemployment. One important feature of poverty is child labor. When the family income is less, children try to supplement the income by working instead of going to school. And social exclusion, that is also noticed among the people who are poor. The community who are poor, they are not found to be residing with the people who have enough. They stay in the areas which are away from the areas where the people who are not poor, they stay. And vulnerability is another important feature of poverty. Why? Because people who belong to certain communities like scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and women, elderly people, they are more vulnerable to poverty. Why they are more vulnerable? Because they do not have any options like owning any assets or they do not have any access to education or health care or even they do not have any opportunity to get any job. So these are all what the features of the poverty which we could see and make out from the visuals that we so, now let us children find out what are the various dimensions of poverty. We can understand the nature of poverty by finding out what are its various dimensions. We can see the nature of poverty is different in rural areas and it is different in urban areas. I will give you an example to visualize what rural poverty is. Now take for example, Ramesh is a person who is of 30 years of age. He is residing in a village, say Rampur, in say Jharkhand. He is not owning any land in the village. So then what he is doing to earn his livelihood? He is working as a laborer in the field of the village land owners who are big land owners with them he is working. And he stays in a house which is a kacha house, very small dinghy house he stays in because he do not have enough say income construct a house which could be called as a proper house. So, he stays in a kacha house which is made up of mud and say his, okay. And he has four children, four children in the age group of 1 to 15. He has a wife at home and he has also a mother who is suffering from tuberculosis. His father died few years ago because of tuberculosis and Ramesh couldn't afford the medical treatment for his father and now his mother is also suffering from the same disease. Wife is doing the household chores, and whenever she is free, she goes to the field to collect fodder and fire. What are the children doing at home? Children are not going to school because they are not having proper clothes to wear, they are not having 
proper food to eat and so Ramesh is not able to send them to school. The younger two children, their growth is undernourished because they are not having good food to or nutritious food to eat. The elder son of Ramesh, he goes to field to work with Ramesh whenever there is a busy season like cutting of the crops or sowing of the seeds like that and during that time he accompanies his father to the field and manages to get some income for the family. Now such is the livelihood of the family of Ramesh. New clothes is a dream for them and goods like oil and soap are a luxury for them. This is the nature of poverty in the rural area. In your book you also have a example and story regarding rural poverty. You can also read that to get some better insight into what is rural poverty. Now then what is urban poverty? I will give you an example of urban poverty. Before I give you the example, you can have a visual of the Dharavi slum of Mumbai to get an idea of what urban poverty is. Let us have a look at the video. children, you could see how the people are leading the life in that congested slum in a big city. This is a reflection of what is called as urban poverty. People have moved from the rural areas to the urban areas in search of job. And whatever job they are doing in the urban areas, they are basically unskilled work as a result, they get low payment and that is why they are forced to live in a small jhugi or we can say it as a jhopris in the slum areas. And the families who stay over here, they do not have the basic minimum requirement of life like you can say the proper sanitation and the hygienic environment. Families who stay in these slums in the urban areas mostly the children of these families do not have proper clothes to wear. They are not able to buy even shoes for themselves and going to school is also not possible because the children of these families they try to help the parents by working in small 
units like I gave you the example of tea stalls in the dhabas like that they try to work over there and that is why they remain always in a very you can say a pitiable condition where the life is full of hopelessness and despair and these are the people who are basically the vulnerable groups when we talk of dimensions of poverty the vulnerable groups that is also one of the you can say greatest challenge to one country how to take care of these vulnerable groups in our country particularly the women elderly people people belonging to the communities like scheduled caste and scheduled tribes among them the poverty is more and these people they are at more risk. Why they are at more risk? Because they do not have any assets to fall back on. During any natural calamities like say cyclone, famine or we can say like we are having the recent disaster which is in the form of pandemic which is the COVID-19 pandemic you will be seeing that the people who are most affected are the people who are working as laborers in the factories, in the industries, in the towns, in the cities. They have been forced to go back to their villages because of closure of the job units in the towns, in the cities. Now you imagine children how these people who have left their jobs and they have moved to the villages how they are managing their life without any income. Now this is going to increase the percentage of the poor people in our country because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Now another dimension of poverty is what we observe that there is inequalities of income within a family. In a poor family all suffer. But again within that family, some suffer more than the others. Who are the some who suffer more? They are the elderly people, the women and the infant female child. They are systematically denied equal access to whatever resources that is available to the family. One way of looking at poverty, another dimension is what? Interstate disparities. We will find that in our country, some states are more poor in comparison to the other states. That means what? Many states have more number of poors in comparison to the other states. Now coming to analyzing the poverty in the global concept or in the world, we find that it is the developing countries which are living in extreme poverty. Okay, children. Now, let us try to find out how do we know what is that percentage of the people who are living in poverty so that we can find out some means, some ways and some schemes to reduce that percentage. So, measurement of the extent of poverty is done by the government of the country to know what is the headcount ratio of the poor in our country. Headcount ratio of poor means what? The number of people who are not having the minimum basic requirement. To estimate, to find out the extent of poverty, what is used is the poverty line. How do we measure poverty? We measure poverty with the help of what is called as poverty line. What is poverty line children? It is a line, a cutoff point on the line of distribution which divides the population as poor and non-poor. 
that is a line which is fixed by taking into account what the minimum amount of income and the consumption of certain goods which are required to sustain the life on the basis of that a cut off point is decided and whoever is above the cut off point are non poor and who are below that cut off point they are called as poor the poverty line is fixed on the basis of income and consumption levels how do we know what is that minimum level of income or consumption so that we can decide which will be the cut off point for that the consumption of certain goods is taken into consideration what are those goods which are required for minimum sustenance is say food minimum clothes then education health then we require the consumption of fuel and light so these are the some commodities which are taken into account and the quantities of this commodities are multiplied with the respective prices to find out what is that minimum income which is required to help one individual to sustain for estimating the amount of food that is to be consumed we use what is called as the minimum calorie requirement certain food items like say cereals pulses milk vegetable oil sugar these are some of the essential food items which will give the required calorie to an individual by its intake that is decided and what is that accepted average of calorie requirement in india it is 2400 calories per person per day in rural areas and 2100 calories per person per day in urban areas 2400 in rural areas and 2100 in urban areas why it is more in rural area because requirement of calorie will vary according to the age of an individual the sex of an individual and most important the nature of work that one individual is doing in rural area people are subjected to more physical work in comparison to the people who are working in the urban areas that is why the calorie intake requirement in the rural area is 2400 whereas in the urban area it is 2100 on the basis of the expenditure on this minimum calorie intake the poverty line for a person has been fixed at rupees 816 per month for rural areas and rupees 1000 for the urban areas and this has been done in the year 2011 and 12 why the requirement is less in the rural areas in terms of rupees it is 816 whereas in urban areas it is 1000 because in urban areas the prices of the goods are little higher in comparison to the rural areas now on the basis of this a family of 5 members living in rural areas and earning less than rupees 4080 per month will be below the poverty line and a similar family in the urban areas would need a minimum of rupees 5000 per month to meet their basic requirements in india the poverty line is estimated periodically children normally in every 5 years by conducting what is called as sample service and who carries out this sample service this is carried out by the national sample survey organization in india and in order to compare the developing countries who are facing poverty the world bank uses a standard uniform poverty line and what is that it is the minimum availability of equivalent of dollar 1.90 per person per day that means the poverty line is fixed at dollar 1.90 people above that will be called as non poor and people having less than that will be called as 
over. Now, one important question, children, is why do different countries have different poverty lines? Every country do not have the same poverty line. It is because every country's level of development is different. Their social need is different on the basis of the level of development in their accepted social norms. Every country has its own poverty line. Because this minimum requirement which we take to form a poverty line, it is based on what? It is based on the availability of the income to the people in the country. It will vary from time and place. Like for example, children, in country like United States, people who are not owning a car, they will be called as poor because their estimation of poverty is in that way. Because their requirement or minimum requirement is what? If they are not owning a car, they will be called as poor, maybe. But in India, owning a car is a luxury. So poverty line in every country will be different. Okay? Now let us now see the extent and nature of poverty in India. This is a table which shows the estimates of poverty in India. Table 3.1 that is there in your NCRT textbook and the source is the economic survey 2017 and 18 and from this table children you can make out from 1993-94 to 2011 and 12 we have some data with regard to poverty ratio in rural areas in urban areas and number of poor in the rural and the urban area and what is the estimate there has been a substantial decline in poverty ratios in India from about 45 percent in 1993-94 to 37.2 percent in 2004 and 5. The proportion of people below poverty line further came down to about 22 percent in 2011 and 12. The number of poor declined from 407 million in 2011-12 with an average annual decline of 2.2 percent during 2004 and 5 to 2011 and 12. Now here is a bar diagram which shows the extent of poverty of the vulnerable groups. This bar diagram is also in your book. Now you can see in this bar diagram the extent of poverty of the scheduled tribes, scheduled caste and the casual farm laborers and the non-farm laborers. It shows the number of people who are poor among every hundred people. The average for poor people below poverty line for all groups in India is 22. 43 out of 100 people belonging to scheduled tribes in rural areas are not able to meet their basic needs. 34 percent of casual workers in urban areas are below poverty line. 34% of landless agricultural workers are poor and 29% of scheduled caste are also poor. Now coming to inequalities of income within the family, here is a visual. You can see that there is one adult man and there are so many women in the family and children. The person is wondering how to send the children to school as he has not been able to get a job in the urban area he went to the town to look for a job but he couldn't get it so this explains the extent of poverty within the family there are so many people living in the family and one person is earning to take care of everyone's need so what will ultimately happen in this family those who are elderly women and the infant child they will be deprived of certain say uh, access to the resources like going to school, consuming milk, this all will not be given to all equally. Okay? Now coming to interstate disparities. What is the estimate of the poverty ratio in our selected Indian states? This is there in the bar diagram again. This is the graph 3.2 in your chapter 3 in your book. You can have a look at the, it 
And what we have found out from that graph, recent estimates show while the All India Headcount ratio was 21.9 in 2011 and 12, states like Madhya Pradesh, Assam, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Odisha had above all India poverty level. Odisha and Bihar continue to be the two poorest states with poverty ratios of 33.7% and 32.6% respectively. And there has been a significant decline in poverty in Kerala, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and West Bengal. Why the poverty has declined in these states? Kerala, it focused more on human resource development through education and healthcare. Maharashtra had enough industrial growth. Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu probably they focused more on the public distribution of food grains that has resulted in lesser percentage of poverty. And West Bengal, the success is mostly due to the success of the land reform measures. And states like Punjab and Haryana have traditionally succeeded in reducing poverty with the help of high agricultural growth rate. Because of the success of Green Revolution and high agricultural yields, Punjab and Haryana could become the states with lesser poverty. Okay, children, this is regarding the extent and nature of poverty in India. Before we finish the discussion, let us reflect on what we have already discussed. These are few questions for reflection. Which organization carries out survey for determining the poverty line? Is it NSSO, CSO, Niti Aayog or Economic Planning Commission? We have already discussed it children, it is NSO, National Sample Survey Organization. The second question is in which state? The high agricultural growth has helped to reduce poverty. Is it Jammu and Kashmir? Is it West Bengal? Is it Punjab or is it Gujarat? High agricultural growth has happened in Punjab. So the answer is Punjab. Which state has focused more on human resource development? Gujarat, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh or Maharashtra? It is Kerala because in the previous chapter also we had taken the example of Kerala where the healthcare facilities and educational facilities is more. Now, the fourth question is the recommended minimum daily intake of calories for determining poverty line for rural area is 2100, 2400, 1800 or none of the above. It is for the rural area it is 2400. And the last question, poverty as defined by World Bank implies living below $1.90 per day, $1.30 per day, $10.9 per day or $2.90 per day. It is $1.90 per day. Okay children, we could understand what is poverty, what is the nature of poverty and we saw insight into these visuals. In the next session, we will discuss in detail more about poverty. Thank you.